And now my statement on the latest Benghazi lies. This nation was founded on pillars of truth and justice. It's who we are. It's what we stand for. It's why American patriots broke from King George III's tyranny. Yet the Obama administration's relentless affront to the core values of this republic continues to chip away at that very foundation. They laugh at you. They look down at you. And they dance by the Obama playbook of delay, deny, lie, and then plead the fifth. It's all theater to them. The latest performance, former CIA chief Michael Morell swears to tell the truth and incredibly claims his removal of the truth and substitution of lies about Benghazi and his attempt to change the course of history was not political. In my line of work, when someone swears on the Bible and admits he lied and his false claims become the official version of the United States government, it would demand a presentation to the grand jury and a subsequent indictment. He starts. I took out the word Islamic in front of extremists. Um, and I took it out for two reasons. Um, most importantly, I took it out because uh, we were dealing with protests and demonstrations across much of the Muslim world as a result of the video. And the last thing I wanted to do was to do anything to further inflame those passions. <laughs> you remove any reference to Islamic terrorism, any reference to Al-Qaeda, all references to an orchestrated attack because you didn't want to inflame passions in the Muslim world? Inflame passions? They'd be high-fiving each other in the middle of the bazaar. You don't think the killing of four Americans, including an ambassador, burning us in effigy, desecrating the American flag, is the result of already inflamed passions? Are you stupid, too? A little history here, Mr. CIA. It started in 1979 in Iran with the taking of our hostages by Muslim terrorists. Then they started killing us. 1993, the World Trade Center bombing. 2000, the USS Cole. 2001, the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, Pennsylvania. And you think you're going to piss these people off? They already hate us. And by the way, how do we know who the enemy is if you don't identify them? There are all kinds of terrorists. Morell, you lied to us. You lied to Congress. You knew it wasn't a video, and you perjured yourself. You are a political whore. And then, even though the truth was that our CIA warned us and you about the dangers in Benghazi, you take that out. And your reason? This would have been seen as an attempt to make the CIA look good. Look good? It was the truth. Mr. CIA, you didn't just sell your agency to the politics of the Obama re-election campaign and the cover-up for the Hillary 2016 campaign. You sold your soul and you perjured yourself for money now making a fortune, working for one of Hillary's dearest friends. So she can now continue with her lie that she knew nothing about the dangers to her friend, Ambassador Chris Stevens. Now, I'm not a religious fanatic, but there was a man in a garden who took 30 pieces of silver, who denied and lied. What was his name? So you admit you lied to protect the woman who would be president, who ignored and rejected the pleas of her ambassador and the men who were murdered. Proud of yourself? And you sell your fellow CIA men and women for your personal ambition? Even comic book characters know what the truth is. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. <laughs> You're going to end up fighting every elected official in this country. Truth and justice were betrayed by you, your president, and the woman who would be president. 
It's not just the four men murdered. It's not just their families battered and beaten with the changing narrative from this administration, including from the mouths of the President Obama, Secretary Clinton, and Secretary Panetta. And it's not just the American people. It's our republic. It's our foundation. It's who we are. How dare you try to change that? And that's my statement. Joining me now, former CIA uh, uh, senior analyst Fred Flights. All right, Fred, why would the head of the CIA choose to believe a Washington desk man over a CIA station chief on the ground witnessing what was going on? Well, Judge, thank you for having me on, and thank you for your relentless pursuit of this important story. I was a CIA analyst for 19 years. This, this story is so painful to me. Intelligence analysts are taught to inform policy, not to make it. Now, how Morrell would ignore information from the man on the ground in, the, in Libya, the station chief, put out talking points he knew were false and would advance the Obama campaign, I just find appalling. Why this is such a problem is that this undermines the reputation of the CIA as an honest broker in Washington. The media is going to make this go away. I understand that Mr. Krauthammer said we should stop talking about it. But there's going to be a long-lasting effect on the Hill among members of Congress when CI makes a call on an issue based on the ramifications of what Morrell but, but, said. But, Fred, you know what? I mean, to defend you and all those CIA men and women who put their lives on the line every day, the truth is that the men and the women on, uh, on the ground said the truth. It was the political, and I already said it, I call them a political whore, who changed the facts and instead substituted a lie. So hopefully this isn't going to affect the CIA. They were right. They warned us. They warned the government, and no one listened to them and then they wouldn't give him credit. But by, let, let me move on. By not identifying the terrorists specifically, did Morrell uh, uh, give them more time to get away? I think there's a possibility that that happened. I mean, the CIA was advancing a story that continued for several weeks just before the presidential campaign that distracted the media, distracted many people that are looking at the story and what really happened. And I think we had to consider the possibility that we may not have been pursuing these terrorists because the CIA said that it wasn't a terrorist attack. Crazy. How do your fellow uh, CIA uh, uh, men and women feel about this, their director lying to the American people? My friends in the agency and my friends in the intelligence, on the Intelligence Committee staffs, they're very disturbed about this, and many of them can't figure out what happened. But an, an issue that keeps coming up over and over again is that there must have been analysts who objected to this happening. Did they file complaints with the Inspector General? Have the, why haven't they come to the Intelligence Committees to say, my work was politicized? Clearly, someone's work was politicized. Words were taken out. Where are the complaints about politicization of intelligence? Well, and, and you know, that's a very good question, Fred, because it seems that everyone is shut down. We haven't heard from any of the people who survived the fight. We haven't heard that, you know, other than a couple members of the families complaining. It's almost as though there is this hush, you know, in this lid that's put on the most transparent administration in history. But shouldn't the CIA be about justice and accountability and 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 not leaving our men behind on the battlefield and do you think that if we had had a select committee from the beginning we would have gotten to the bottom of this I, I'm concerned that there hasn't been accountability on many levels accountability at the CIA is not the most important accountability the accountability is what happened in Benghazi and why did it happen what were the security problems uh, but I think there should have been a select committee in the House, and it still baffles me why this was not approved. The administration has played the, the, uh, a game where each committee has, has jurisdiction over a certain part of this story, and they won't talk about an, an issue that is not within that committee's jurisdiction. It's called the jurisdiction game. A special committee could get past that. I simply don't understand why Speaker Boehner has not approved a special committee to basically look at all the aspects of the story, look at all the intelligence, and find out what happened. Well, you know what, Fred, hopefully we'll be able to find out. And you know what? I don't think it's too late, uh, and we're going to stay on this story. It, it infuriates me. Fred Flights, thanks so much for being with us.
Great to be here. All right, and coming up, Sebelius might be gone, but that doesn't mean the end of the Obamacare problems. Stay with us.